The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he has planned for us. I mean, we always uh, take the two verses before that, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourself is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, Amen. but then he made you to be his masterpiece. And he made a masterpiece for me called Wendy Lynn, my wife. Aww. Whoa, take a look at this masterpiece. Oh, you're just sweet, David. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, our last programs you took because yeah. I couldn't do it because I Why wasn't, not? I was under the weather a little bit. Under the weather? Yeah, I was under the weather. Yeah, well, you were clear across the world. Well, no, that's before I was across the world, David. I'm talking about when you did the programs by yourself. Okay. Uh, I was in Nigeria, Africa. And let me tell you, it was amazing, and it made my eyes open big, believe me, to see how these people live. And what was really, really strange, David, to me is uh, they don't have welfare there. They don't have food stamps. They don't have health care. And they're happy. Mm -hmm. And they take care of their self. They don't have uh, the, the problem. They don't even have homeless. Mm -hmm. Because everybody takes care of themselves. And their families. And their families. They take care of them. So it was really amazing. I enjoyed my stay there. I was very well uh, guarded. And people just uh, came up to me, and they were just, just as sweet as can be. Well, what were you doing over there? We were starting our new program with OCN. We opened up Africa for OCN, mm -hmm. and now we are all over. So I am just so thankful, and for the sisters and brothers that went with us, we just really enjoyed. I ate a lot of eggs. <laughs> and they can tell you that. <laughs> but God is good, and his mercy endures forever. But David, God, I was praying, and uh, I seen, while I was over there, I seen a lot of deliverance. I saw also a lot of uh, healings, and a lot of people that uh, didn't know who Jesus was. They came to know him. So I know that this program in uh, Nigeria is going to be a blessing to everyone. Mm -hmm. And the scripture that he gave me is James 4, 5 through 10. The spirit that God placed in us is filled with friends' desires, but the grace that God gives is even stronger. As the scriptures say, God resists the proud, but the proud. gives grace, mm -hmm. the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So then, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will run away from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. You hypocrites, be sorrowful. Cry and weep. Change your laughter into crying, and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Wow. Woo, we sure found that so true in so many lives, and we've seen so many people completely changed when they tried everything else, couldn't do it, and watched Jesus come in and just take and give them a whole new heart. Take the old heart out completely, and the desires and the things that, that drove them and sometimes totally controlled and owned them, completely gone. 
and a new life put in with love, the joy, the peace, uh, joy to be around. They became brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, whole new family of God. I mean, that's what we're talking about is Christianity. We're not talking religion here. I'm sorry, I start talking about about Jesus Christ, and people go, well, uh, you know, well, my religion, I'm not talking religion. Religion's bondage that Jesus came to take you away from and to give you that life of walking with him. One of our favorite verses here is John 10.10. 10. Yeah. I am come, come that you might have life and, and have it more abundantly. More abundantly. <laughs> and that's the thing that we want to see happen to you. And that happens with Jesus Christ coming in and setting you free from all of the bondages that are there. So come to Christ. Get that whole new life that he has for you. The future that he has in store for you that you couldn't even imagine right now. How beautiful and how fantastic that that could be. Amen. Well, uh, I'd like to get Wendy to sing for us right now. And then we're going to be sharing God's word a little bit about who you are in Christ Jesus. And she's got a song that I just absolutely love, and it has something to do about our future for eternity. <clears throat> Oh, build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home. It doesn't matter who lives around. Just so my mansion sits near God's throne. I have no mansion, no earthly kingdom, but my cabin will lose till I get home. It doesn't matter who lives around me Just so my mansion sits near God's throne So build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm going home It doesn't matter Who lives around me Just so my mansion Sits near the throne Mother's mansion might be close by me on that golden avenue. She was the first one to tell me about heaven, Lord, the very first one to tell me about you so build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home it doesn't Just so my mansion sits near God's throne. Just so my mansion sits near. 
as close to you Jesus as I can get because we all can talk with you all the time here and we want to just go right on in there well talking about the family of God and the families that we have it is well we got a unique situation because uh, Wendy's family is a lot of them from Arkansas well now we know what Arkansas is known for (laughs) out here (laughs) <laughs> not only they call it, we better not say that, but the family interconnections are really something, and they sure are for Wendy, too. So let's take this one here. I found this story, <laughs> I really like it. For openers, this guy says, I met a widow who lives with her stepdaughter. I marry her. At the wedding, my father meets the stepdaughter, falls in love, and marries her. So now my wife is my father's mother-in-law. <laughs> and my wife's stepdaughter is my stepmother. Plus, I am the stepfather of my stepmother. <laughs> it gets crazier than that. You ain't seen nothing yet, as they'd say. My stepmother and father lose no time, and a boy is born. Now, this guy is my stepbrother. And as this guy is the son of my wife's stepdaughter, this makes my wife this guy's step-grandmother. <laughs> it really gets mixed up. Also makes me the grandfather of my stepbrother. Now, it only gets worse. <laughs> okay, you guessed it. Now my wife gives birth to a baby boy. My stepmother is now my son's stepsister and also my son's grandmother since he is the son of of her stepson. And now my father is now the brother-in-law of his grandson. <laughs> or, or, or is it the stepbrother-in-law? Who knows? Now, now, now for the clincher, though. All this clearly shows that my wife is my father's mother-in-law, plus that I am the grandfather of my stepbrother. Do you get the picture? <laughs> Therefore, I am my father's mm, something or the other, father in something or the other, which makes me my own grandfather. <laughs> well, so then this guy says, I mailed the firm experts in family construction a request for my family tree along with a check representing their fee. The check was returned to me. <laughs> Afraid that some other boy might be born and in all probability make me my own great-grandfather, I asked my father's mother-in-law for a divorce. She agreed quickly and she was going, uh, she was aging as quickly as I was. My father, who is getting younger and younger due to these births, quickly found a new husband for my former wife and my older brother. Update. Yes, a boy was born out of this new union, and who knows? I am now probably to be your own great grand uncle. Did you get that figured out? No, David, I really didn't because, <laughs> you know, you're sitting there talking about stuff like that. But, you know, uh, well, my daddy and my mama somehow were cousins. <laughs> yes. And uh, my mom and my daddy, they got a divorce. And he married, he married my grandmother's sister. Ooh. So my daddy was my uncle, and he was my, grand, he was my dad. My grandfather, he was my grandfather and my uncle. And they're from where? What state? Arkansas. Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I said, and I think about it, you know, and I, I said, well, maybe I'm going to be my own grandma pretty soon or something, you know. <laughs> Our family, they just keep multiplying somehow. Uh, you know, we didn't talk anything about this, but when Wendy and I got married, we're sitting at the, uh, at the <laughs> dining room table with my dad, and you tell the story, huh? you, you were the one that We was... were sitting there, and uh, David's father, he made the statement that his uh, he, mother's last name, well, maiden name was Kendrick. I go, what? You're kidding me. He says, no. And uh, I said, oh, my. I said, my maiden name is Kendrick. And he said, well, then you married your cousin. (laughs) 
Oh, praise the Lord for cousins. I love cousins that way. So dad's the one that knew all that. So even though we're not from Arkansas, we're from here in California. Of course, dad was from back in there too. But uh, we got it all put together and look at the masterpiece that I got. Aww. My doll, my <laughs> wife, from the family of Arkansas. They're well, not putting you down, Arkansas. We're, we're oh, no, in. no. Arkansas is good. I'm telling you. My kinfolk over there, I love them. And your uncle. My un there. Yeah, my uncle. I have an uncle that he's 90-some uh, years, years old, and he's been a mayor in um, Case, Case, Arkansas for 36 38 years. 38 years. 38 now. 38 years he's been the mayor. And you know what? I, I had to sit and talk to him one day, and I said to him, I said, you know what, Uncle Alan? You know, I was a mayor. <laughs> I was a mayor in a place called Yucca, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I was their first female mayor, but I got them their first fire truck and their first ambulance. Yes. We went through there. I just happened to be going through and decided to pull on in here the other, uh, whoa. About what? five years ago. Yeah. And they're saying, hey, we're having a mayor's reunion, <laughs> of all things. And we knew nothing about it. <laughs> so here was Wendy, their mayor, too. So anyway, it's amazing how we get all things put together there. But most of all, get into the family of God. And then we'll Amen. let God get to figure out who the relatives are and all of that. But basically, I get my father, God, and my older son, uh, elder brother, Jesus Amen. in that family, too. And then we have uh, Adam and Eve. Whoa. We are definitely kin to them because we were made. Every person came from them, but we held on tight because we're still the Adams. Adams. <laughs> <laughs> so did I get Eve? <laughs> but but anyway, it's, it's beautiful. We, we didn't plan on talking about any of this stuff. But I just found that, and I thought that, that was a cute little thing to be able to share on there. But most of all, we're so proud of Jesus. We're so proud of what he's done in our lives and making us a whole new creature yes, in and Christ Jesus. Yes, you know, we're talking about family. There was a, in fact, I preached on this in Nigeria about the prodigal son. We talked about that. How he uh, went out and did everything, you know. He thought that he was going to be better and smarter than his father and his brother. And he thought, well, you know, I want my inheritance now before he dies. And what did he do? He took the inheritance. His father blessed him, and he left. And he squandered it. He just, I mean, he, he, had, he did the town. He did everything. He, he, he used the money for everything than what God would have wanted him to do. And then what was so strange is the fact that he started thinking that he had, well, he had no place to sleep except with the pigs. And he ate with them. And he says, well, my father, you know, his, his servants, they eat better than I do. So I'm going to go home. So as he's walking home, what does he see? His dad sees him coming, and he just, oh, he starts rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And he runs up, and he puts his arms around him, places a ring on his finger, and just loves on him. That's family. But then his brother sees this because his dad killed the, big, the, the fattest cow and had a big, big party. And his brother was very envious. Well, look what he did. And look what you've done for him. You didn't do this for me. Well... That's what we get sometimes in families, where we have they're, they're not together. They're, there's so much envy, jealousy, and the Lord says that we're not to do that. We're not to be jealous. Because he made us very special, didn't he? Yes. No matter where you are in life, I want to sing this song that's going to talk about it a lot, because we meet so many people and they think that they're beyond God's grace. Listen to this song. This is for you if Satan is trying to put that into your life. So many times we do go and just start thinking over our past. 
start thinking of all the garbage that we've done, things that we thought would never come in our lives, and yet they are there. We start thinking, oh, we're so far of a sinner that God would have nothing to do with us. The song Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, is something like the meaning of this song. Listen to it and apply it to your lives. Come ye sinners, lost and lonely, Jesus' blood can make you free. For he saved the worst among you, when he saved a wretch like me. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. The faith he gave the power through the mountains makes a way. Findeth water in the desert, turns the night to golden day. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. In temptation, he is near thee, holds the powers of hell at bay, guides you to the path of safety, gives you grace for every day, and I know. Yes, I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes, I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Yes, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Wow. Isn't that so true? I think back on some of the ones that I've seen God change so completely. When I was in Bible college, I got a roommate my senior year. His name was John. John had been a gang member down in, right by the border of Mexico. And he was the leader of the gang. I mean, he, uh, this guy had done, he says, he doesn't know of any crime that he didn't do. He says he didn't even know how many people that maybe he had murdered in the gang wars that they'd have, just shooting into the crowds and out there with baseball bats bashing heads. I mean, that's what he lived for. That was his nature. And as he's thrown in jail to go before a judge that has said, John, if I ever see you again, I'll lock you up. You'll never see the light of day again. But somebody threw a Bible into his cell. He started reading it, remembering. His mom was praying for him. And uh, he received Christ. He had Teen Challenge come on in. They go before the judge. The judge won't even let the others talk or whatever. He says, you know, 
are you guilty or innocent? Well, guilty, he's caught right in the act of robbing a bank, armed robbery, and all of that. And as the judge went to sentence him with the gavel, grabs it to come down, and his arm locked. And the judge couldn't get the gavel down. And the gavel fell out of his hand, and he saw this terror come over the judge's face. And somehow, he says, somehow, John, I don't know what's going on, but something tells me you're going to make it this time. And set him on out, he comes to the Bible college I'm at, becomes my roommate. You talk about somebody who loved Jesus. They really knew of the power of God to totally change a life and make it from the vilest sinner to the cleanest person there is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about talking to a minister or priest or rabbi or the pulp or some saint or whatever, but allowing the blood of Jesus Christ to come, totally cleanse and take all sins completely out of his life, bury them in the depths of the deepest sea, never to be remembered against him again. And John became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away. All things became new. A brand new John. A brand new one. He became the police of the whole place there. He'd ride my motorcycle around at night there, checking everything, making sure that that everything was right for for all of us. I mean, they trusted him so much, he became the guard for the whole college there. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the family of God. Amen. The family of God, even though you're from Arkansas. (laughs) David Adams. I'll never live it down with our relatives over there. Or me. Yeah, we have to go to Elvis week every every year because Wendy and Elvis <laughs> were close friends. And we always stop and go through all the relatives in Arkansas. So I'll, I'll probably be out there sleeping <laughs> outside from now on. <laughs> Get there. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Don't all make him relatives. sleep outside, please. <laughs> anyway, it's a beautiful thing there. But uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about God making you that masterpiece. Amen. A masterpiece. God doesn't make mistakes. And when he made you, he made you to be somebody very special. Amen. Very unique. And I've watched people come into our churches and into our ministries that I, I think, wow, you know. How in the world? Sometimes you think, man, they don't have anything going for them. They don't have any talents, they, whatever. And sometimes they become the biggest blessings that there are. I was pastoring a church in Tacoma, Washington, and we, we started reaching people that uh, had some mental incapacities. And so we started a whole class for them. We got a van just for them because they were special people. They, we let them know, you're some of the most special that there are here. They were some of the biggest blessings to me. I mean, they were always there just pumping me up and hugging and kissing and doing all <laughs> the great things. And when we went to remodel the whole church, it's a beautiful building, but it's definitely in need of, of remodeling. And uh, all of these different organizations, the men's group, the ladies' group, the youth group, uh, all of the ones we had, the choir even, they'd take certain rooms in the church and they'd remodel it. But nobody wanted to do the men's bathroom. (laughs) I wonder why. (laughs) And it really needed updating. And it was this class, they came to, to me and says, Pastor, can we remodel the men's bathroom? Now we know we need help on it. We need your guidance and we need all these others, but we would like to take the men's bathroom. You know, when they finished remodeling the whole church, the one place that we had to stop and just open it up for everybody to go through was the men's bathroom. Because these people, they did everything with such care because they did it for Jesus. And I mean, it was unbelievable, the beauty that they put into or others they just go paint something these guys be a little fine brush because it was for the lord it was because of that church it was because these people loved them and they hadn't found that love in a lot of other places so remember even sometimes the people that we feel like they have no value there are god's masterpiece in some of the greatest ways so how about you 
Do you see yourself as God's masterpiece? He made you that way. But he might have to take you as the vilest sinner and let the blood of Jesus Christ cover you and set you totally free, make you a whole new person in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Your sins are removed from Amen. you as far as east is from the west. Those never come back together again. That's the power of God yes, to do something you. for you. Thank if you allow Jesus Christ to come in, his blood to cover your sins is the only thing that can do Amen. it. Not good works, Amen. not religion, not anything else. Jesus cleanse you with Hallelujah. his blood. If so, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for your precious blood. Thank you for your precious blood. That you gave to cover my sins. That you gave to cover my sins. So I receive you. So I receive you. As my heavenly father. As my heavenly father. I am in the family of God. I am in the family of God. A masterpiece made by you. A masterpiece made by you. You be my Lord. You be my Lord. From here on out. From here on out. Amen. Amen. So welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Your his masterpiece. Amen. Oh, see it. Plan. 